to Jesus' house, sitting on that shot in the house. Hallelujah. All right. You're welcome to church in the house of Jesus' house, Silicon Valley is another time of Bible study. And uh, we bless God because today is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in him. Amen. And so, uh, Brother King, if his brother King is on the line. All right. Brashim, uh, can yes, you sir, lead uh, us in prayer? Bra Brother King is supposed to be. All right, Brashim, can you can you go ahead and just bring us into the pr presence of God? Oh, Brashim, I'll let you at the one leading praise worship, right? Yes, sir. I can. Okay, I'm going uh, to pass you by. Dr. Yes. Chica, go okay. ahead and lead us. Okay, sir. And she will bring you back. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Chica. Amen. Okay, do I need I don't do I need to come off camera? Uh, yeah, come come off on. Your camera, please. <laughs> okay, or you sir. are in the secret place of the most high. Uh well, wow. not not secret place, but okay, I'll turn on the camera. Give yes. me one second. I know God is good. All right, oh. while we're waiting, while we are waiting for you. All right. Okay. Yes, Lord. Break our world down tonight as we dig deeper into the wisdom of God tonight. We trust God for His wisdom, for His understanding. Hallelujah. So, wherever you are, get your family members, get your Bible. We continue our series of Bible study from this book, Developing Godly Character uh, for a Higher Altitude. It's part of our Healthy Church series. And we trust God that tonight the Lord will minister to us, to reveal his counsel to us. And I trust God that he will damage our ignorance, like Brother King would say, and he will reveal himself to us to us a new dimension of himself. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, Dr. Chica, are you ready for us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Praise God. Can you all hear me clearly? Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, praise God. Hallelujah. I just want to praise. take this worship song real quickly. You are God from beginning to the end. Yes, Lord. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. Neither from the beginning to the end, mm -hmm. there's no place for argument. Oh, yeah. oh, you were God all by yourself. Sing it one more time. You are God. 
From the beginning to the end. There's no place for arguments. You were God. Hallelujah. He is God all by himself. I just want us to just take a quick minute to just appreciate him because he is God all by himself. There is no place for argument. He is who he is. He is the I am that I am. He's the great and mighty God. And so, Father, today we just want to take some time to acknowledge your sovereignty over our lives, over this world, over this nation, over everyone, oh God. Daddy, we give you all the praise, oh Lord. We thank you because we know you are God all by yourself and there is no one and nothing that can compare to you. Daddy, we thank you because we know that you're not a man that you should lie. Neither are you a son of man that you should confess of your sins. Lord, have you spoken and will you not do it? Daddy, we thank you because that which you have spoken concerning our lives, concerning Jesus House Silicon Valley, we thank you because you will do it. That which you have spoken concerning this nation, concerning this world, world daddy we thank you because we know you would do it be thou exalted O lord in jesus name in jesus name everlasting father king of glory my lord and my god just want to thank you for your faithfulness lord anyway we have fallen short of your glory in our thoughts and our words and our deeds we ask O lord for mercy in the name of jesus we thank you O god for your faithfulness we thank you for your loving kindness we thank you O god because there is no one like you Daddy, we commit today's service unto your hands. We plead the blood of Jesus over every devices that will be used. Over this virtual altar, we plead the blood of Jesus on everyone represented um, on this, every family represented um, on this line today and everyone who has come in and who is yet to tune in. Daddy, we thank you for their lives. Oh God, we cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. That the message that will be thought today, we cover with the blood of Jesus. We cover... Um, whoever is um, the person who's going to lead the praise and worship, Lord, we thank you because it will minister greatly unto us, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. We sanctify mm -hmm. every homes with the blood of Jesus. And even mm -hmm. folks who are on their way, maybe listening in from their cars or even at their workplaces, O God, Daddy, we plead the blood of Jesus over where they are in the name of Jesus. Father, we welcome you, O God, into today's service. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We begin to send angels to stand guards, oh God, and secure in the name of Jesus. But I, we thank you because there is no one like you. We say to you, be all the glory, all honor, all adoration and power. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Praise team over to you. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. I hope everyone can hear me clearly. Yes. All right. Okay. Awesome. God is good. Hallelujah. Um, let's just begin to glorify the name of God. Let's thank him. Let's say wonderful words unto him. Father, we bless you for tonight. We thank you for this gathering. We adore you. You alone are worthy, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm 118, verse 3, he says, let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy and loving kindness endures forever. Let Jesus our Silicon Valley say that his mercy and loving kindness endures forever. Amen. Amen. So we're going to glorify his name tonight. We're going to start by singing glory be to the name of God. Glory be to God in the highest amen Hallelujah. glory be to god in the highest yeah. amen for his mercies and your red forever amen for his mercies and your Red forever. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. For his mercies and your Bread forever. 
Amen. For his mercies and your bread forever. Amen. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship his holy name. Praise the Lord, oh, my soul, oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I walk in his own I will praise him from I'm everlasting. Everlasting, 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 from everlasting, 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 praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Amen. Hallelujah. Awesome God, awesome God, mighty God, mighty God, we give you praise, we give you praise, awesome God, awesome God, we give you praise, we give you praise, mighty God, mighty God. You are highly lifted up, awesome God. You are highly lifted up, mighty God. Awesome God, awesome God, mighty God. Mighty God, you praise me, you praise me, awesome God, awesome God, if you praise me, you praise me, mighty God, almighty God, you are highly pleased, awesome God, you are Mighty God, you are awesome God, you are awesome you are highly Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, you are so good. Oh, yeah. Blessed be you. Lord, you are so good. Blessed be you. In heaven, you are the Lord. On earth, you reign Oh, 
Lord, you are so good. Oh, yeah. 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 In heaven, you are the Lord. On earth, you reign forever. Oh, Lord, I'll be Blessed be you. Oh Lord, how great thou art. Blessed be thy name. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are wonderful. My God, I am blessed. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. Excellent, excellent. Is your name Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are wonderful. My God. You are excellent, Lord. You are wonderful, my God. You are excellent, Lord. You are wonderful, my God. You are excellent, Lord. You are wonderful, my God. You are excellent, Amen. 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 He's wonderful. He's great. Excellent is his name. Excellent is his power. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. What is holy name? Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Praise the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Is Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, we worship your Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is Hallelujah. God is Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brosheon. God bless you. Good evening, everybody. Once again, uh, can you hear me? All yes, right. Sir. So yes, sir. Yes, thank you. God bless you. So uh we continue the series of our Bible study uh that we have been uh teaching on and we'll be studying from rather. Uh, developing godly character for a higher altitude. And um, last week, uh, we, we talked about breaking the same consciousness. So uh, quickly before I bring our teacher tonight, Dr. Obina, uh, one of our ministers will be ministering to us, uh, who can just remind me um, one or two things that you remembered from what we learned last week. Um, hallelujah. So I need somebody who can remind me you have your book with you. If you don't have the book, please get a copy. What, what is the thing that we discover last week? Uh, what makes a man a sinner? What makes you a sinner? Uh, 
Yeah, over to you. So anybody who is willing to help us there. What makes a man a sinner? Is a man a sinner because he commits sin? Or is a sinner because there is sin inside of him? Hello. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I learned that sin came from Adam. Yes, ma'am. Why salvation came through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, mom. Thank you, grandma. Yeah. Sin came by one man into this world. And by one man, salvation also came into this world. In other words, all mankind become a sinner not because they have committed any sin. So is there anybody who can give us a supporting scripture for that? Any who you can remember is, is, is a very popular scripture. Many of us, we quote it, some of you, you recite it by ad, you say it every day. Yeah. Does anybody, is there any supporting scripture for that? All right, somebody is saying John 3.16. No, it's not John 3.16. John 3.16 is the solution to the sin, to the problem. But somebody told us where the problem came from. Hello? Romans 5. Yeah, let, who is talking? Let, say it loud if you are sure. <laughs> Romans 5. <laughs> yes, Romans 5, verse what, ma'am? Um, 17 to 19. Yeah, what does it say? Just paraphrase it. You don't need to say it exactly. Just give us, uh, if, what does it say? Exactly what you said now, that sin came into the world through one man. Yeah, so that is the problem. <laughs> came through one man, yes. Yeah. But we have another scripture that confirmed that, uh, that make us to know that sin came in into us. And it's a very popular scripture. Let me help you in the Old Testament. Uh, Genesis. Let me also help you one more. It's in the book of Psalms. We talked about it last week. We should be like the Berean Christian who after they have studied the word, they go back and uh, they go over those things to see whether what their teachers have said to them is true. You understand? Yes, it's a very popular scripture. That all Psalm, of five, Psalm 51 Psalm one, verse 5. Psalm 51 verse 5. Thank you. <laughs> that, that's that Bumi. Yes, eh? sir. Yes, Who's sir. That? Is that that Bumi? Yes, sir. All right. I owe you a bottle of uh, a cup of Starbucks if you like coffee, but if not, I'll uh, drink special... tea, sir. You don't drink <laughs> coffee? No, sir. <laughs> okay. I, I have a special package for you. Amen. We Thank you, sir. It. We shall send, we shall DHL it. Amen. Uh, Thank or, you, sir. Or USPS it. And that's it. Can you can you tell us what that place says, ma'am? That's Psalm 51, verse 5. Somebody read it for us. Sister Christine, are you online? Bible yes, readers. Uh, yes, Your Excellency, Dr. Chick, I, I need somebody to read that scripture. Sharp, sharp. Psalms 51, 5. Yes, ma'am. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. Behold, I was shaping in what? Iniquity. Yeah. And in sin did my mother conceive me. So in sin, my mother con 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 conceived me. So if you take that scripture with what grandma said earlier on, um, Romans um, chapter 5, verse 17. So sin came in through one man. So we become a sinner, not because you commit sin, but you, because you are born in sin. So sin is the nature of a man who does not have Jesus Christ. The moment you are born into this world, a child who is born today, so many of us, we pray, and we will say to God, oh, we are praying uh, the, uh, using the head of a child, or say, oh, in the name of this child, oh, this innocent child who have not committed any sin, we are praying in the name of that child, and that God should forgive us. What long, one more, two, 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 let's share. So that, that statement is wrong because even that child was born and conceived 
in iniquity, in sin, did my mother give back to me. But we also saw that when a man is born again, a man and his wife, even if one of the two of them is born again, and the child is born, the Bible said that because of the believing wife or believing husband, that child, innocent child, is sanctified that the blood of Jesus Christ. And I also remember that one of the things uh, Brashim said while he was teaching is this. A child, so let me let me throw that back to actually. So we said last week, so a child who is born today, if that child died, will the child go to heaven or hell? I need somebody to answer that question. Because Brashim talked about that last week. If a child that is born today, if he dies, will that child go to heaven or hell? Hello. We said heaven. Would go to uh, what did you say, doctor? Somebody is answering. Where will he go? You are not sure. Sister Christine, you can go ahead. I said have I said heaven and sister. I, I believe Sister Christine was also saying sister heaven. Christine, where did you say the child is going? Uh heaven, sir. Why would the child go to heaven? Uh, because they do need that consciousness. You said what? Be aware of sin. Say that again. They need. They need to be. They need the consciousness of sin first. They, they need the have... consciousness of sin, or they must they're have not... committed. Yes. So children aware. don't commit. So you see, little kids, they might uh, until they pass the age of innocence, they don't know what iniquity is. So they will need to get to the point. So that is why for those of you who have children at home who are watching right now, there is an there is an age or an age of innocency where God overlook every error of a child from the age of zero to the age of probably 10 or 12. From the age of 12, 13, it becomes the age of accountability. There's age of innocency. God will overlook the sin of little kids. Because they don't know. But something inside of them is also telling them what you are doing is wrong or what you are doing is right. But they begin to come to the point of accountability when they begin to take responsibility for their own action. That is why if you're a teenager, you are at home, you are watching us. Once you reach certain age, your errors cannot be excused. You need to repent for every mistake and every wrong or every sin you commit. And the only way we can repent is through the blood of Jesus Christ, by accepting Jesus into our lives as our Lord and personal Savior. The last question I want to throw before I bring Dr. Obina. So I haven't, I haven't, I haven't had that teaching last week, breaking the sin consciousness. So the question, there's a major question I want to ask us. Why did Jesus come? Hello? Why, why did Jesus come? What is the primary reason why Jesus came into this world? To die for our sin, sir. To die for our sin. Yes, that's number yes. one. Any other person want to rephrase it again? Somebody said for the salvation of our soul. To yes, any other person. Again, sir. sir? To redeem us back to God. Again. To redeem us back to God. So, as Jesus come, to make us rich. Answer. Uh, so can I approach can I approach that question from a different yeah, angle? Yeah, approach it from another angle. It's, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and every other thing shall be added. So yes, I think it's all part of the benefits of, you know. So is that, a, is, thank you, you use the word benefit. Yes, sir. So <laughs> that, I'm so, I'm talking about the primary purpose. No, sir, no, sir. So, that's Thank not you. the primary purpose. So we need to understand the primary purpose of Christ coming and his secondary purpose. Whatever we get as a result of the first one, they are benefit. Like Dr. Chika said, prosperity is part of the benefit of having freedom from sin. Healing is a benefit. Breakthrough is a benefit. So the issue of sin is the primary reason. The Bible says for this very reason, the Son of God was manifested. Somebody read that scripture quickly. We have two minutes before we bring Dr. Obina. First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. 
I need some a, a good reader quickly. First John chapter three. I'm really taking from okay. verse three, yes, to verse eight. Okay, so okay, first John three, verses three to eight. And yeah. every man that had this hope in him mm -hmm. purified himself. Yes, ma'am. Even as he is pure. Even as he is pure, yes, go ahead. Whosoever committed sin transgressed mm. also the law, mm -hmm. for sin is a transgression of the law. Yes, ma'am. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins. Okay, don't go think away. He was manifested to do what? Take what verse away are you reading? our sins. Verses five, sir. Verses five. He was manifested mm -hmm. to take away our sins. He was manifested to give us breakthrough. No, sir. It was manifested to give us riches. No. No, sir. It was manifested to give us a uh, husband and wife. No. No, sir. It was man. You see, this is the problem in the church, and I think the problem comes from the pulpit. And for those of us who are coming from Africa, and I want to say quickly that you see, and every one of you who are the ministers online tonight, and those of you who are watching me. Uh, there is tendency for circumstances to begin to determine our, our preaching and our teaching and what we are teaching the people. We have to be careful not to begin to preach circumstantial gospel where the poverty in our countries or those of us from third world nation, because we are, we are so poor, we want breakthrough. We are now presenting Jesus as the only means to an end as a means to an end, not the end itself. Jesus is the end itself. It's not just the means. So we need to understand that the primary purpose of his coming is to destroy the works of the devil, to destroy sin. Once sin is dealt with, sir, in me, in you, every other thing shall be added unto us. Yes, sir. Do you understand? So yes, that sir. is why our gospel and I've said this, if you take most of our so-called gospel preachers from third world nations and you bring them to a white church, an evangelical church, or Protestant, Presbyterian, Baptist, and you want to go there and preach, give your, if you give your life to Jesus, you are going to have breakthrough. They are looking at you. What are you talking about? Because they already, they already have break, what breakthrough as do they want again? They can afford three square meals. They can buy the car they want. If they have a good credit, they can get whatever they want. If you have a good credit, you don't need down payment, you can buy a house. But back home in Africa, in some country, we have to pray, 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 pray. Holy Ghost, give me a give me house, give me a house, give me a house. Now people will go to the mountain for breakthroughs, for houses, for car, for husband, yet their heart will not be changed. Yet iniquity is still there. Don't forget the Bible said he opened his hand and he satisfied them. It's part of the goodness of the nature of God, which some of the things Dr. Obina will be talking about. So let us be conscious and be careful that we don't pervert the original intention of the gospel and the reason why Jesus came. Read that scripture, Dr. Chica, and that will round up there to verse 8. Okay, sir. Take verse okay, 5 sir. again. Okay, sir. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. And in him there is no Verse sin. Amen. Yes, sir. Verse 6. Whosoever abided in him sinneth not. Mm. Whosoever sinneth had not seen him, mm. neither known him. Mm. Verse 7. Little children, let yes. no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Even as he is righteous. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. He that committed sin is of the devil. Mm. For the devil sinned from the beginning. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning is the nature of the devil. Iniquity is the nature of the devil. Would we'll take another day to go into that. Continue. For this purpose, the yes. Son of God was manifested. Hallelujah. That he might destroy the works of the devil. So what is the works of the devil? Sin. Yep. From this scripture that Dr. Chica just read now, everybody, 
let your spiritual eyes and ears be open right now. Come alive. <laughs> What's the word? Verse 8, so not, he, he that committed sin is of what? The devil. For the devil does what? Sin it from the it's beginning. Sin from the beginning. And for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that it might destroy the works of the devil. So sin is the works of the devil. Sin is the problem in the world. In leadership, in government, in, in home, when a man does not have Christ, when iniquity has not been dealt with, there will be a problem in the house. When sin has not, everything you can imagine is of the devil. And Jesus came to destroy that. That is the reason why he came. And that is the gospel we are preaching to you today. That is what we are trying to say, that until you have the attitude and the uh, godly character, which is the righteousness that comes from Jesus Christ, not the righteousness that comes from your good works. Your good works righteousness is filled around. The beginning of your good righteousness is you accepting Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Now the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. So every one of us who are leaders and teachers and Christians out there, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. For this reason, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. God bless you. Thank you, every one of you. Without wasting much of our time, I want to bring our minister for tonight that God has prepared for us. Very anointed, very wise. We, we jokingly, we call him ancient of this uh, because he has some witty wisdom of talking. So please put your hand together. Let's celebrate minister. Emmanuel, Dr. Obina Azuzu. Dr. Obina. Amen. God amen. bless you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm full just now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I've been hearing so many things, and I thank God for how He has been helping us. We've been looking at the issues of sin and how it has um, dominated several aspects of our life and what the major work of the death of Jesus Christ upon the cross means for us. Uh, tonight, we are taking it a little step further as we are, the sole aim of this book that we are studying is to help us develop godly characters. And every day, every day in the study, we'll pick out certain characters in our life that if you look at it from the generality, as Pastor was talking, you sum up everything as sin. But sin is a broad heading that everybody falls into and falls out of. So every day you, you can easily get people ask questions. This one that I did is this sin. That one is this sin. And we can keep the argument here and there and keep going till thy kingdom come. Because apart from the major things that are listed and are seen, some others are leading to godly characters that we neglect. And that is the essence of all these studies that we do, to be able to make you and make us Christians that are total man filled with the capacity to bring God's word to the earth. The Lord bless his word this evening. The Lord cause his face to shine upon us and give Amen. us both in understanding. Amen. Increase our knowledge in his word. As we share his word together, let there be power released in his word. Amen. Meeting us at every point of our need. Directing Amen. us. Sowing a seed that will germinate to bear forth fruit in our life. Fruits Amen. of godly character. Fruits that will bring about transformation in our lives as individuals in our lives as a family, in the families, in our lives as the church, and bring us to a place that we would have been different from how we were when we first came in contact with Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. This night we are looking at uh, the operations of mercy in the life of a believer. I want to believe you can hear me. If you can hear yes, me, sir. say amen. 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 We can hear you, Dr. Bina. That's good. I just want confirmation that we are all together. Yep. Okay, so we are looking at the operations of mercy in the life of the believers, study 13. And uh, one of the good things about it is that we had come from several studies that had to help us understand the nature of sin, 
and what the Lord itself, himself had to do for us to release, up, release us of that clause of sin that is hanging over our life. Because as we heard, in sin did our mother conceive us, and sin came through man. Mm. So there is no one that is exempted. If you say, okay, because you are a woman, sin did not come, uh, it's the man that brought it. Well, you have heard now that we were conceived, and conception comes from the mothers most times. And if you say, okay, you are a man that uh, is the women that have sinned, sin also came to the world through man. So you don't have anywhere to run to. So having said that, there is an aspect of our life that we need to look at to grow to a level that we are living a life that is a little bit of, or much more above sin, above reproach, above the things that will bring us down. And that is where we come to in this study because we are looking at the operations of mercy in the life of an individual. Our text this evening is going to be Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 15 to 16. Do I have active readers online that are going to help me read? Praise God. Is anybody there that will help me read? Yes, they're active readers. Okay, thank you. God bless you. Okay, Hebrews chapter 4, we're reading from verse 15 to 16. And that is where we are taking our introduction and our base text from so that we can grow from there. Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, Mm -hmm. that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Praise God. It says, for Hallelujah. we have not a high priest which cannot be taught by our feeling of our infirmities. Now, one of the reasons why scripture brings that to our remembrance is that, you see, sometimes we often think that men of God are supernatural beings. Men of God have so many powers that are beyond the reach of this world. Which to an extent is true, but you see, there is something that God has put inside every one of them that makes every human being always have reasons to seek God. Irrespective of whatever level you feel you have attained in this life, there is something that is always missing. And that is what the Lord wants us to understand. That thing that is missing, that is always put in your heart, is something that tends to, most times, it's supposed to draw you to God if you understand. But then if you don't understand, it's going to draw you to seek him to so many other things. And that's why you have people that, even with their riches, they are still not satisfied. Even with their wealth, they are still not satisfied. Even with their anointing, they are still not satisfied. Because we have a high priest that has gone and walked through the, all the steps that are necessary to live and exist in this earth. And by all means, he's able to help us understand that we have a limitation in our life. And he understands that limitation. And he knows that limitation. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you, if you don't understand what it is to be um, to be without money, then when you get rich, you will find it difficult to explain what poverty is and without money and without food to somebody that ha is going through such because you may never have experienced it. You don't know what it is. If you don't know what it is to trek 20 miles looking for water to drink and trek back and forth every, maybe every weekend, Saturday you go, you trek five miles to fetch water that will last for one week, then you do that again, you're, you're going to find it difficult to, to understand 
when somebody tells you he's going through that, because if you were born in a place where every day you have water flowing, you just turn the tap, the water flows. And that's like normal to you. So it's going to be difficult to relate on some of these things. Praise God. So it is one of the things for which to, for all, for you to know that God is merciful. It is another thing for you to, to have an understanding of how that mercy will operate in your life in practical ways as a believer. The focus of this teaching is to help us understand and appreciate the mercy of God in our lives, spiritually, physically, emotionally, and financially. Now, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, it says, We were, it, it helps us understand where we were before now. And like I was giving instances of poverty and, you know, trekking miles, you need to understand where you were as an unbeliever, where you were perhaps in your initial state of coming into Christianity. What God has done to graft you into the, the firm tree of the beloved. Mm. So if you don't understand what God has done for you, it's going to be difficult for you to be looking at God and asking for mercy for him to intervene for you. And that's why it's important. That's why we're doing this study. In Ephesians chapter 2, is there, if anybody is there to help us read, because a lot of our readings are going to come out from Ephesians. I hope you are with yeah. me. Yes, Ephesians sir. chapter 2. Let me read this one from verse 1 to 3. He says, And you had he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the princes and powers of the air, to the princes and powers of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversations in time past in the lust of the, our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others now there was a conversation we have had over time past conversations that had to do with unbelief Conversations that had to do with lack of trust, conversations that were filled with sin, conversations that were not glorious, conversations that were de 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 derogatory, that were pulling down. These were conversations that we felt were normal, they were, you know, normal part of life. And scripture helps us to understand, yes, that was the kind of conversations that you may have had over time before you gave your life to Christ. That was where God brought you from. You see, it had, he had so much so dealt with you that he has broken all the rock part of you. All the impurities in you, if I would use the words, to manufacture the pureness of gold that he desires you to be. Making you more expensive now as an, in, as an individual. That is the work that God has done for you. And it's trying to help us understand this. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are going somewhere. According to the scriptures, above, we were dead in sin, cut off from the life and the light of God. But through the love of Christ and mercy of God, we were brought back to the light before now. Now, the work of salvation is almost like taking a piece of rock that something is hidden in it, breaking it so much so that it is shattered to bring out the diamond in it that shines. If you have watched movies about um, diamond and getting diamond, you understand what I'm, I'm saying. So that is the aspect of what God has done for you to shine. He has taken you through all those very, very unpleasant experiences that you have record of as part of your life, uneasy experiences of which you have record, you know, as part of your growing up and your work with God, but has brought out the diamond that is what reflects his presence. 
in your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, let's categorize some of those aspects of our life that God had to do a work in. Number one, there was a time that we were enemies of God. Can you imagine? Pastor, you were an enemy, enemy of God. Mm. Me, I was an enemy of God. We were not yes. friends with God. Yeah. At a stage that, yes, when God looks at us, you know what enemies is? It's like US and Russia. Mm. I don't know if they are friends now. I don't know. But I'm just saying, in essence, there is nothing good that is expected to come from your enemy. Even when your enemy is doing something good, you always see it as there is something yeah, good. Praise God. Hallelujah. That was what Colossians was telling us. We were dead in sin. Ephesians 2 1. It says, And ye had he quickened, we were dead in trespasses and sin. So, in other words, sin was so your master controlling you. The devil was your father in charge of your life and directing everything that you do. Not only was he directing, suggesting things to you that sometimes you even feel it's God that is saying it. The sin, sin was, and the devil were so much in control of our life. In Ephesians, that same Ephesians 2, we were aliens to the things of God. And that was why it was difficult for us to, ah, you see, you know when you are praying or you're singing praises or you're even humming praises, someone that is a non-believer will, will wonder, what are you singing? What are you singing? And if they hear your ringtone and it's one kind of wonderful worship song that is your ringtone, you say, ah, so you are still using this kind of thing as ringtone. You see, those were aspects of the life that the enemy had control over us. That we could not in any way say that, yes, we have been dragged out of uh, the pit to come to the kingdom of the marvelous son, Jesus Christ. Praise God. So that was the aspect of our life before. As I'm saying this, I know you can reason back into your life. And you can reason back into all those things you were doing. That for you, yes, you could say, okay, uh, this thing is normal. But then, there were aspects of sin. There were aspects of drawing you away from God. We are excluded from the promise of the covenant. So if God had blessings, you see, even though God makes his rain to shine upon, his, his rain to fall upon the the, the good and the bad and everything. Those that are children of God have access to his throne. In the place of prayer, ask God for intervention. Things happen. When you were an unbeliever, when they say people pray, things happen. You will say it's coincidence. Now oh, it's coincidence. And people will give testimonies of how that they pray. God turned their life around. You will say, after all, it can happen now just by mere, mere omission or commission or commission. It's just, things just happen. But I dare to differ because things don't just happen. Heavens move to move the hand that control the earth when people pray, when people seek God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And finally, we are without hope. Ephesians 2.12. It says, let me start from 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in the past Galatians in the flesh, Gentiles in the flesh, who are also uncircumcised by that which is called the circumcision of the flesh made by hands, that at the times ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the common the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. Praise God. Does anybody have a different version of this particular scripture? Ephesians 2.12. Yes. What version would you like? I can do amplify. Okay. Yes. And you want verse 12? Yes, verse 12. Okay. So verse 12 says, Remember that at that time ye were separated from Christ. 
that is excluded from any relationship with him, mm -hmm. alien alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise with no share in the sacred messianic promise and without knowledge of God's agreement, mm -hmm. having no hope in his promise and living in the world without God. Live, having no hope in his promise and living in the world without God. Does anybody have NIV? I want to see if there's a version that puts it differently. And I'll give you an inst the instance where why I'm, I'm trying to pick out some things from other versions. Any NIV? Mm -hmm. Yes, I have NIV. Version? NIV, okay, please read. Okay. Remember that at that time, you were separate from Christ, mm -hmm. excluded from citizenship in Israel. Correct. And foreigners. Correct. Keep going, keep and, going. Please. And foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. You were foreigners without citizenship, without hope in, the, in, in, in this world. You see, it is a difficult thing. Let me put it this way. From the countries where you and I come from, you don't know what it is to be a citizen. Say you know. You don't know because you are already one. But when you leave that place and come to another place, that is when you will realize, ah, these things that I used to take for granted is a major issue. So if government decides that they are going to give everybody that is called citizen $100, $100 everybody that is a citizen will receive it. You, you won't even know that such thing is existing, you know? I say, okay, yes. All the citizens have the right to, you know, vote and cast vote. You, you just be looking, you campaign, you can even join in rally, but the time they say, okay, cast your ballot, you won't have ballot to cast. And that is, that's, that is how we were in this world when we didn't have Christ. So the enemy played on us on every aspect because we don't have the citizenship of heaven. So all the benefits that are supposed to come to us from heaven will not come because even though we were in this world, the enemy has blocked it. So it is beyond our reach. And you see, this, it's, this scripture is trying to help us remember those times and compare it with now that you are in Christ Jesus, that we have received Christ Jesus. What have you received? We have received mercy. And which is what we're talking about. We have received grace. We have received truth. We have received salvation. And all this cumulates as a result of our redemption. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are quickened by God in Jesus Christ Jesus because he is rich in mercy. It is not as a result of our hard work, our intelligence, our knowledge, our traveling, our understanding. You know, in the, the, there's something they call uh, streets. Is it streets, uh, street worthiness or street, um, street, street smartness? Smart. Yes. Street wise. Yes, street wise, correct. It's not as a result of your being street wise that you're able to escape some of these things. No. Scripture says that it's, as, it's of the Lord's mercy that you are not consumed. The same road that you pass that others get consumed is the same road that you pass and you are living. Praise God. Hallelujah. So these are works of the mercies of God in the life of a believer. Now, I have gone through some of these aspects to bring your mind to help you understand what salvation has done and how we can begin to tap into the mercy of God. Because mercy opens door that is beyond recognition. Mercy gives hope where there is none. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
Now, there are two, 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 two things that we need to look at. Number one is conviction, and the other one is condemnation. Conviction as a result of what you have done and condemnation as a result of how you're going to move forward. You've been convicted in your heart and you are not condemning yourself. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now this work that the Lord Jesus has done to bring you back, now you are in his citizenship. You have the citizenship, the commonwealth of heaven. It is a result of you being convinced that you have conviction is a firm belief held the opinion that yes, God has delivered you from something. And not a condemnation that you cannot achieve anything. Or you, an expression of, you know, a disapproval of you because of the things you have done. Yes, you have done so many things that may have prevented God from talking to you. But it may have also prevented God from reaching out to you. But we have come to the place of mercy. Amen. We have come to the place that the Lord is looking at you and he's not seeing all those things that you have done. He's looking at you from a new light, a new stage, and a new level. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 8. From verse 1 to 4. If anybody is there to help me read. Romans 8. What advice? From verse 1. Romans 8, 1. You say, yes. therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God mm -hmm. by sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled that uh, might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the spirit yes that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit this the, the flesh has so much control over your life over your thoughts, over your so many things you want to do. But then if you give in to those controls that it has, then you are not living by the spirit. You are living by the flesh. Praise God. Part of the work of mercy of God is to bring us conviction and not condemnation. Condemnation makes it difficult for you to come to the presence of God and ask for mercy. Conviction makes it easy for you to come to the presence of God because you can't help yourself. Two things. One, you are scared, you are ashamed. You cannot come to the presence of God just like um, Adam was. He knew that he was, after he had sinned, he found it difficult to come to the presence of God. So he had reasons to want to hide. That is where condemnation does to a believer. Conviction makes you understand that you have erred. You need repentance. Repentance can only be given by the Lord God himself. So you approach his throne with mercy and ask him for grace to help you. That this thing, you cannot help yourself. This aspect of your life is difficult for you to help yourself. Even though there is a law that is written about it. You see the law, you know the law, you recite the law, but you can't help yourself. Mercy says, come. Condemnation says, run for your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are, are we getting something? Yes, sir. And uh, sir, if I, if I can say something before you proceed. Yes, please. 
Um, I'm going to read a different uh, version of uh, Romans 8.1. It says, I'm um, reading Amplified. It says, therefore, there is now no condemnation, that is, no guilty verdict, no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as a personal Lord and Savior. So just like you said, and uh, when I was trying to check, you know, to look into condemn the word condemnation more, he says, to basically express complete disapproval of something, typically in public. So when we are saying condemnation, is basically like you have been condemned, like you are done completely. The verdict has already been rendered. There's no, no like you pleading your case or anything anymore. You know? But when you are convicted, you are basically saying, okay, you know what? I can come back. Please have mercy on me. You still have that, you know, plea to say, God, please have mercy on me. But once you have been condemned, the verdict has already been rendered. Everything is done. It's a done deal. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Sheung, for helping us out with that. Now, when you are condemned, it's like there's no, turn, there's no turning back. There's nothing you can do to help yourself. Okay? But then, when mercy speaks on your behalf, when mercy intervenes on your behalf, and that is where the Lord Jesus wants us to hold on to. We have been condemned from the beginning. If you remember the, the, the introduction that Pastor was giving us from the last study, whether you were born white, black, yellow or green, as you were born into this world, you are already a sinner. You don't even need to do anything to, to help yourself out. So, but then as you grow up, you now realize your, that yes, you were born in sin and you now begin to walk towards the place of righteousness to help yourself from the destruction that is heaped upon you as a person. That is the same thing when you come to the level of understanding of the work of grace in your life, you are living a life that is no longer after the flesh, but with the spirit. And you are no longer condemning yourself. And God is no longer condemning you. But then you are having a conviction in your heart in regards to what God has told you. And that is why you can boldly come before his presence and ask for forgiveness so that he will release mercy. Praise God. Often a believer who has sinned will mistake conviction for condemnation. When you blow it, two things usually happen. The spirit of God moves in to convict you of that sin. This is an act of mercy by the Holy Spirit. Secondly, the devil moves in to condemn you of the sin. Those are the two things that I've tried to expand shit. The, the devil will want you to see yourself that you are condemned. There is no hope for you, which is correct, which is true. But then that is not the angle for which God wants you to see yourself. God wants you to see yourself in a place of conviction, in a place that even though, yes, this has happened, you cannot help yourself. There is hope for the living. There is hope for the tree, if it be cut down, that it will yet sprout forth. And that is the level that God desires of you. And I started by saying about, talking about our conversations that was what it was before in the world. Conversations of not having hope. Conversations of not having a future. Conversations of not knowing where, what and where and how and anything a conversation of dejectedness. So a new conversation that the Lord is putting in your heart and in your mind, rejecting the, the, the plans of the enemy and the words of the enemy and replacing it by a conviction of what grace can do for you and the message of God can be released upon your life. Praise God. Note that conviction is designed by God to bring you back to himself. Conviction the source of life. In John chapter 16, let's read John chapter 16. Is anybody there? John chapter 16 from verse 
8 to 10. John 16, 8 to 10. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and ye see me no more. Praise God. Hallelujah. So this is just helping us to understand that the, the nature of the work that the Lord Jesus Christ will do in the life of a believer. He will help you understand that in as much as there is sin in this world, you are not tied to it. You are not under the bondage of sin to do as the flesh pleases you, to be against God. But that he goes to the Father and he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because the world believes not in him, and of righteousness because I go to the Father and ye see me no more. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, at the end of that scripture, Jesus says something, almost to the end, I think in verse 12, he says, I have many things that I want to explain to you, mm. but I cannot bear them. Mm because your spirit will not even understand some of them. And that is why sometimes so many of these things are only, they are difficult for us to understand. And that is why at, at some instances, you will find yourself in a place that you know that there is no help hope for you to be helped. Hmm. Just like Paul and Silas, when they were thrown into the prisons and chains and everything, there was no hope that they could be helped. But they prayed, they sang praises, and the Holy Ghost came down and helped them. Mm. Remember the story of uh, Paul when he was traveling and the sheep capsized and all the people even afraid. A scripture says that one of the men brought out sword to kill himself, the captain of the ship to kill himself. And Paul told him, see, don't kill yourself because God has spoken to me that no life will be lost on this ship. With that boldness, the man did refuse to be, to kill himself, to commit suicide. But what happened? The ship capsized, the ship capsized, yes. Mm. But no life was lost. Amen. It is God's mercy. It is an act of mercy. Mm. It is not because of the wonderful word that Paul would have spoken. After all, he was even a prisoner of whose word does not mean anything at that time. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know what situations you may have found yourself in time past and you have experienced God's mercy. And those mercies, so those are some of the testimonies that propel you, challenge you, you know, give you so much faith that this God, nothing can shake you about this God. Yes, sir. I wish we had time. I would have taken one or two people's testimonies in that regard. But I know if I say, oh, yeah, let's take the testimony. Some people's story will be so long that it will overtake <laughs> our Bible study. Mm. But there will be time for that. God bless you in Jesus' Amen. name. Now, take hold of the mercy of God. Hebrews chapter 4 from verse 15 to 16. Take hold of the mercy of God. And that's where we are getting to. Is anybody there? Hebrews 4, 16. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes, Hebrews 4, you want just 16 or 15 and 16? 15 and 16, please. Okay, verse 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, mm. but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Stop, please. Let us... Sorry, sorry, Dave. Please just hold and let's pause. Read the last two, um, two sentences again. It's just one sentence. But let, just read it again. I want, I want us to catch something. Mm. Okay. 
but was in all points tempted like as we are, mm. yet without sin. Mm. Praise God. Hallelujah. He, Hallelujah. He was in all points tempted as we are. And let me bring out some of the points. Do you think, you know, Pastor was saying, oh, now, that um, he was telling us something about um, the works that Jesus Christ have come to do for us. It's not all about uh, riches and wealth. And our sister was helping us understand that, yes, I'm much more than riches and wealth. Those ones are benefits of what we get as a result of the work of Christ in our life. But let me ask you, you see, we have worked from on different levels of Christianity. But let me ask you, you see, if you were in the congregation and you were one of the disciples at that time with Jesus, would you have joined? It's not a good example, but you see, I don't know how to put it, but Judas Iscariot was part of the disciples. You know, he was the one in charge of money and finance. Do you think you would not have been cajoled into uh, this small finance that we are getting? So what are we going to do about it, Pastor? You know, um, the ministry is moving, the ministry is going large. And you know, the anointing is so much on you that you can even feed uh, 5,000 without money. So do you really think that this offering, we need it for the church? Those were some of the temptations of even the high and mighty at that time with Jesus. The woman with the alabaster bus came with all her, you know, as someone will come in this our generation and you say, ah, pastor, I see that you have been driving uh, from A to B. I want to bless you with this car. Of course, you bless the pastor with the car. But Judas in his mind would have said, uh, why are you wasting this, this uh, alabaster box? That perfume is very expensive. I don't see why you waste it on the feet, on the feet, not even on the head or any, just on the feet. We would have sold it and made some money to move the ministry. Temptations. Or perhaps you are so filled with so much faith your faith is ginger brother. You know all these brothers that are, their prayer moves mountain and move the rock and everything. Mm. And at last, they told you that your master is going to be taken and you denied it. And all you could do is bring out sword in front of your master and cut off somebody's ear. Moved with the spirit. This is Peter, the brother, the rock, the everything. Mercy. 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 At that point in time, he was so confident that this, this thing is not seen. It's not seen. Forget it. It's not seen. We are moving by the power. But uh, Jesus, as they come, as they catch you, as they hold you, anybody that holds you, I cut off his head. Mm. But what did Jesus tell him? He said, if, if, if it was by word, do you think my father in heaven would not have called Host of, host of angels to come and demolish these people. Mm. And that's why Jesus is helping us to understand that. You see, I was tempted the same way that you are tempted now. Mm. The same restrictions that you have, that you, that, it, that you find it difficult to follow the principles of God and do the things that God desires of you. Every one of them were tempted at that, at that instance. And, you know, the, the temptation they faced was even much more difficult because, you know, some days you come to church as Jesus is ministering. You just be wondering, ah, uh, Jesus, this is your prayer today. Would there be a miracle? Because we have been preaching that they should gather out that miracle is going to happen. What if miracle does not happen? These people are going to shame us. You will see, I will just make noise and go. Thank God, miracle happened. Mm -hmm. But what if miracle did not happen? Does it really mean that God is not there? 
maybe you have been moving from one church to the other, all in search of miracle. I used to say in Nigeria in those days that ah, church churches by uh, you move from one to the other, the church that is not progressing, you go to the next one, and no progress, you go to the next one. Until the day we have open register, you know, in, uh, in some churches, Anglican, Baptist, and the they have registers of members. But the Pentecostal churches came up and they don't have registers and members, so they don't know who is who. But now they are starting to have some of those things. Praise God. But then my, my, my message to you and my question to you is these temptations that you feel your own is too much. Jesus also had this temptation. Mm. Remember, he was born in a manger. Manger means that they don't have house. Mm. You, you were even born in hospital. At least your own is even. People <laughs> came to attend to you and they brought you out, you know. For him, mm. the first set of things that he opened his eyes to see, apart from Mary, his mother, was what? Animals. What are we saying? Mm -hmm. Animals, goats, and the rest. And you know how those places smell. That's not good there. So he was tempted as much as we were. So that we would not see that, see him as, oh, he's almighty, he's all powerful. But he has gone through all that we can go through so that he will understand where we are coming from. When we put our knees and arrange our words in prayers to him, we we'll make it so simple and so straightforward. Even the complex one, we tell him how complex it is. Then he can release mercy for us. Praise God. Hallelujah. We need mercy of God. But how do we get it? We must come before his throne with humility and genuine repentance. The benefits of mercy. Mercy will heal you. In Psalm chapter 6, verse 2, is anybody there? We are looking at the benefits of mercy now. Yes. Psalms chapter 6, verses 2. Yes. And it says, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak. Hmm. Friends, have you gotten to a place where you cannot, you know, you have put in all your efforts, you have done so much, and you feel the results you're expecting is not coming out? Ask God for mercy. Ask God for his mercy. In humility and in submission to his power, ask him for his mercy. Amen. Are you facing a challenge? that you find too difficult, ask God for his mercy. Mercy comes to intervene where there is no way, where all hopes for you to be rescued is gone. Mercy, mercy speaks, speaks words that we will not understand to open doors. Mercy will lift you from the gates of death. Psalm chapter 9, verse 13. Okay. Mercy will, will um, lift you from the gates of death. Is anybody there? Yes. Is the only one person that is reading for us? <laughs> no, I'm here too. <laughs> I'm okay with somebody reading. All right. Amplified, sir. He says, yes. Have mercy on me and be gracious to me, O Lord. See how I am afflicted by those who hate me. You who live he says, see, from the gate of death. Yes. He says, see how I am afflicted by those who hate me. As, you are, as a believer, you may not even know that people hate you. You may not even recognize that they are doing things against you. And that is why we, we, we pray, we bind, we, you know, we scatter their plans and everything. But when mercy speaks, 
you don't even need to know. You don't care what they are gathering. Because mercy makes a way. Mercy makes a way. It lifts you from, excuse me, it lifts you from the gates of death, from the boundaries of the enemy. It translates you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son, mm. the kingdom of light. I keep saying this, mercy intervenes, intervenes when no man has a solution. When all hope for solution to come is lost, ask God for mercy. Ask God for mercy. Praise God. Amen. Mercy brings deliverance. Mercy will bring joy and gladness. Mercy will bring correction. Mercy will make men to favor you. I think I need to read this one. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 11. Mercy will make men to favor you. You see, they would say, oh, ah, this position, nobody gets it. Oh, they don't even know, ah, it's not, it's not, oh, no, it's not available. Because of mercy, they won't even know that they are giving you the position. Because of mercy. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 11. Okay. Oh, Lord, I beseech thee, let now thy ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servants who deserve to fear thy name and prosper, I pray thee, thy servants this day and grant him mercy in the sight of this man mm. for I was the king's cup bearer. Praise God. And grant him mercy in the sight of this man. You see, this is a situation that looks like um, how will I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I will use to relate to this one. But you are in a situation where it looks like nothing, nothing is going, nothing is moving. And you look up to God and you say, Father, favor in the sight of men. Men who don't know you. Favor is when you receive help in a situation where you do not qualify for. I think that's the, the easiest way I would say it. God intervenes. The mercies of God speaks on your behalf. The mercies of God lifts you up. I really wish we could have come to a place where we would say, let's just ask God for mercy. Forget about asking God for anything. Mercy, mercy, mercy for the land, mercy for the church, mercy for us, Lord, as people. Lord, have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Let us experience your mercy mm. to a level that we have never experienced before. You will see doors begin to open for us that we, we do not know existed. You will see battles begin to be won for us as church, as people that we never knew mm. we could fight. We will see answers to prayers that we may have been praying years, but we didn't know that God was just by the corner ready to answer us. Mercy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mercy will bring you out of any bondage. Doctor, uh, before you proceed, sir. Yes, sir. I have a question. Yes. Um, looks like everybody's quiet and I don't know why. Um, so is it, is it possible for, for a man or a woman uh, to abuse the mercy of God? And also, is it possible for one to run out of the mercy of God? Mm. Mm. That is a tough question because I don't know mm. if I have an answer or I know how I'm going to answer it. You can throw it open, Dr. Bina. Okay, it's open. Let everybody yeah. contribute. Let and let me first of all give us reasons why I want to throw it open. You see, 
in your dealings with God as an individual, you would have an encountered a situation where you would not be able to help yourself. That's why I'm throwing it open. So as you're answering, give us instances if you have any. That will help build somebody's faith. That will help challenge somebody's hope. Then we would know if mercy can be overused. It's an open check as far as I'm concerned. Mercy is an open check that you sign every day you want God to intervene. Excuse me, sir. Can I ask a question along yeah. that line? What's the difference between mercy and grace? What's the difference between mercy and grace? And grace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Don't distract us first. Let's answer the one we have on ground. <laughs> yeah, because I, you know, let me tell you something, Dr. Bina. The no, reason no, no, why I, I think it's a good question. You, but I, just... I think it's a good question, Bracken, uh, because if you want to really answer the question of Brother Sheung, there is no way you will not link the two together because Apostle Paul made us to realize that we should not frustrate the grace of God. So grace and mercy are twin. So where you find mercy, you find grace. So if grace can be frustrated, mercy can also be frustrated because we can take the grace of God for granted. So, and if you take the grace of God for granted, then it means that you are also trying to abuse his mercy because it is very possible for us to be deceived by the mercy of God. It's a merciful God. He will show mercy. But if you keep doing the same thing, you today you commit sin, to, tomorrow you do the same thing, you go back to Father, have mercy, Father, have mercy, Father, have mercy, Father, have mercy. Yes, he's a merciful God. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, brother, brother, Dr. Kulolu Buma is giving you. You have answered it to Yoruba. Yoruba, he said, Grace <laughs> is holy <laughs> affair, <laughs> mercy is Arno. <laughs> So, pa so but I, can, I don't know. I, I still want to come back. So, so you, I, I think you need to take both of them together. What brother is okay. asking? Yeah, yes. it was a loaded pa question. Pa actually, it was a loaded question. I know. But in lament lamentations, though, like mm. because he says it in Lamentations three twenty two to twenty three, he says the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases; his mercies never come to an end. Mm. Thank they you. are new every morning. Thank you, Sister Chica. You know, that is why I said mercy is an open check. Grace is unmerited favor. Mm -hmm. Who gives grace? Okay, God. God. Are we together? Yes. Uh, am I asking difficult ones? Um, excuse me, sir. Can I yes. can I say something? Um, Go ahead. Going back to what Dr. Chika just said, isn't that scripture referring to the general merciful nature of God? Yeah. Isn't that what that scripture is talking about? Because yep. I, I, I feel like that scripture is just talking about the general merciful nature of God, not the individual mercy he shows each and every one of us. Am I wrong? Please correct me. You can take it in that direction, but you also remember that he also says that I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. So by by what that scripture you have just quoted, Dr. Bina, you have yes. just answered the question of Brother Sheung that mercy can actually be can can be exhausted. And I want to show something to you. First Chronicles chapter 17. So, Dr. Sister Christine, thank you for, for saying that. Dr. Chika, thank you. Both of you have just have spoken right. The mercy of the Lord are new every morning. Every day over a believer who is walking in righteousness, who is loving God, the mercy are new every morning. But there is a place where mercy, so like Sister Christine said, is a general mercy of the Lord. I wake up this morning, the mercy of the Lord is new to me. The grace of the Lord is new to me. And I want to show you two scriptures so that you can relate it together with what Brother King asked. And I want to show you that mercy can be exhausted 
and can be overused when you begin to take him for granted. And then to, to relate it with doc, what Dr. Obina said last. So Dr. Obina's scripture actually nailed the question. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. If you say I'm not going to have mercy, there's nothing anybody can do. He's the owner of the mercy. If Dr. Obina has $1 million in his pocket and he said, I will give my $1 million to whosoever I want to give it to. Even if I come before him and somebody come and cry, 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 roll on the ground, roll on the ground. He has made up his mind that he wants to give the $1 million to me as his pastor. So even if you come, you say you are the junior brother of Biden or uh, Obama or, or Trump, the man has made up his mind that this $1 million is going to give it to me. And he might even decide that this $1 million, I'm not going to give to anybody, I'm going to give to my wife. In my, in my magnanimity as the husband of Choma, I'm going to give $1 million to my wife. Even if my mama asks me, my mama will born me. My, so for the benefit of those who are watching, my mother would have give back to me. I might not give. I'm going to give to my wife. Look at what God said. First Chronicles chapter 17, verse 10. Let's go there quickly. First Chronicles chapter 17, from verse 10. And are we there? Yes, sir. And since the time that I commanded the judges to be over my people, Israel, God was talking to David. Moreover, I will subdue all thy enemies. Furthermore, I tell thee that the Lord will build thee an house. It was after David was thinking good things in his heart about God. He was having some wonderful thought, reminiscing about the goodness of God. And the guy was like, what can I do for God? What can I give God back? And he said, I'm going to build me, I'm going to build God a house. And then the following day, God sent Nathan to him and said, you know what? That was a good thought you have for me, my son. Don't think of building me a house. I've seen your heart. You love me. You have a genuine heart for me. But this is what I'm going to do for you. Because of that thought, I'm going to cut off your enemy. Everybody look at verse 11 and 12. He said, and it shall come to pass when thy days be expired. In other words, when you die. Everybody has an expiry date. So let me remind you, as you are sitting down, as I'm sitting down, the number of your days is written in the palm of your hand. So every product has an expiry date. The only thing is that we don't know. It's only God that knows it. But it's written in the palm of our hand. We can't see it. Uh, so it shall come to pass when your days be expired. So my prayer is that nobody should expire on time. May you not expire. There are some product that will expire in 2021. And may we not expire quickly. And it shall come to pass when thy days be expired, that thou must go to be with thy fathers, that I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me a house, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. Everybody have a thirteen, And I will not take away, I will not take my mercy away from him as I took it from him that was before thee. So mercy can be exhausted and can be overused because of individual's attitude. So he said unto David, I took my mercy away from Saul. I choose not to have mercy upon him. So it brings you back to the scripture Dr. Obina quoted. I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy. And I will have judgment upon whom I'm, I'm going to have judgment. But like um, Dr. Chika and Christian said, there is a general mercy that is available to everybody. So we do not overuse or abuse that mercy. Let's go to Galatians now. Let me show you something there. So the, in Galatians, so Paul was talking about, uh, I think Galatians chapter one or chapter two, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, chapter two, Galatians chapter two. Let's go to the last two verses. Uh, verse 20 and 21. Galatians chapter two, verse 20 and 21. Brash, if yeah. you have the amplified, I want you to read for me verse 21 after I read in King James. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Everybody look at verse 21. That's how we can uh, interchangeably use mercy and grace. He said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Verse 21 in Amplified. Yes, sir. He says, I do not ignore or nullify the gracious gift of God is amazing unmerited favor. For if righteousness comes through observing the law, then Christ died needlessly. If and death would have would have no 
would have had no purpose whatsoever. So, like I said, mercy and grace are twin. Wherever you find grace, you are going to find mercy. Wherever you find mercy, you find grace. And both of them can be abused and both of them can be revoked by God. So, to answer Bro Shim's question and Brother King. So, Dr. Bina, back to you. Okay, praise God. Uh, uh, praise the Lord, if I may if, if, if I say something, sir. Yeah, go ahead, sir. So, like, like what Bro Obina was saying at the beginning, that uh, Jesus Christ also went through the kind of temptation we are going through right now. Yeah. So we can always go to him and ask for mercy when we have sinned. Mm. And he's always going to forgive us. Mm. But the Bible says we cannot continue to be in sin and say grace should abound. Mm. After a while, if we continue in sin and we always come back and we go back again, we always come back. The grace will no longer be there. The grace has been exhausted. So that's what I just want to point out. That it's possible that grace is exhausted if we continually do the same thing and we always come back. We cannot just continue and we think uh, we can continue to mock God. God is not mocked. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And Uncle, if I can say something, uh, it might be a little, you know, opposite of what you just said. Um, I think what that means that grace is going to run out is when someone actually dies right uh because we have to remember that when god forgives he forgets mm. you know, so you are not going to be punished for the sin that you've committed yesterday you know, that's the work of the devil that keeps reminding you what you've done to keep you in condemnation to keep you from approaching the throne of grace that god please forgive me once you have been forgiven god forget if he doesn't forget like we won't even be able to go mm. to first place but the thing i understand about the grace running out is when an individual dies that's it so whatever you are doing at the moment before death comes once the person is dead there's no more grace the grace is done there's no like uh, i'm going to go back and repent or god please send me back to her let me repent you know there's a saying in yoruba we uh and also in English, after death, then judgment. So once the person is dead, then the grace is completely out. But um, once you go to God and ask for forgiveness, I'm not encouraging people to keep sinning. That's not what I'm saying here. But what I'm saying is, if you get a chance to ask God for forgiveness and he forgives you, then the Holy Spirit helps you to go away or to steer clear of that sin. And that's why we need to keep ourselves in Christ so the Spirit of God can help us to grow in, in Him so we don't keep doing things that we've been doing when we were babies, when we were growing up. So that's why we as grown-ups, we don't, we don't take milk anymore. We eat solid food and everything like that. So as we continue to grow in God, we are supposed to know about his grace, his mercy. These are the things that we can do. These are the things that we cannot do. So that's why for us, once we are a believer, we cannot claim ignorance anymore because we have been shown the way. We have been given everything it takes mm. to, you know, to remain in God. But if we, we abuse that grace and then death comes, then that's the end of it. Amen. Brother Sean, can I challenge that? Yes, please. Yes, okay. please. Do like so how how about how about like folks and, and i'm sure like we've probably heard stories of like folks who have died in sin so if you're saying grace ends when you're dead mm. so how about folks who have died in sin but then god gives them a second chance you know somehow they get brought back to life and then they're able to repent so if you're saying grace dies in sin so how about those people who have experienced grace even in death. Hallelujah. So we yeah. have to kind of go back to that, um, what is it called? The, the Bible verse that says, I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy on. Mm. That is God's mercy to that particular person. You know, if God gives someone an opportunity, even like being a Christian, accepting God as our Lord and Savior is not our own personal thing. It's not because like, oh yes, I had the word of God. I'm just going to believe God, you know. You and I, we have not seen God physically, but we have seen his work. We have seen his wonderful works in our life, in, you know, in the life of people around us. And we believe God. 
right? So if God gives someone another chance to come back to life, maybe the person has not finished what God wants the person to do, or just, you know, decided like, you know what, I'm going to show you mercy or, 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 or the other, and we can't challenge that at all. Also, what I say was, God might be answering somebody else's prayer. Somebody has, somebody died, his wife was praying, she didn't give up praying, and God said, you know, I'm sending you back. So, yeah, that, that might also be the case, too. He just had mercy on the person because right, somebody else is praying. Praise the Lord. Um, I'll, sorry. I was called, go on. Um, <laughs> sometimes one is very hesitant to speak, but um, you see, uh, bro, Dr. Twinde said, uh, Kule said something about grace going away. Mm. I think that was uh, where bro, um, Rashim was responding to. Um, it's uh, It's... When I go to um, Romans chapter 5, he quoted mm -hmm. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. But then if you go to 5, verse, um, verse 20, because this, the, the, the verse 5 ends in 21, it says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Mm -hmm. But where sin abounded, grace did abound much more. Mm -hmm. You get me? Uh, so there's certain th things we don't like to preach in church because we don't want to encourage people to sin, mm. to go in it, because it becomes a habit. It becomes, it becomes a, a lifestyle. And we always find ourselves coming back. It's not like we're not dealing with that as individuals. And if we need deliverance or special counseling to overcome certain things, we can seek for help. You get me? And then if you go further, you still talk about... Uh, that sin about sin, and then in verse six, that's why he says, shall we, "Shall we continue in sin? That grace, chapter six, sorry, shall we verse one? Say, mm. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound?" Mm. So, in, in actual practice, you know, and in your walk with God, you know, depending on how far you've come, but you notice that what the scripture is saying that even when you sin, grace multiplies even the more. You know, and you know, I've known folks that we try to stay away from God. Because we have sinned, we don't want to come to church. We don't want to come to the, guard, uh, uh, the gathering of brethren and other things that we do, because we are falling short. You know, so a practice of sin. I repeat myself, and to encourage people that oh, there's always grace is what we we, we the, the the church tries or we brethren try to um, discourage people from doing. Mm. But actually, grace does not go away. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's there. All right, yeah, Dr. Dr. Um, Apostle Paul, let me let me let me say something, Doctor Bina, before you con um, yes, sir. Um, um, Susie, are you there? Looking at um, Sister Christine put something in the chat room, said that taking advantage of God's mercy and grace is tantamount oh. to mocking God, and we know what the Scripture says about mocking God. Now, every one of you have spoken wonderfully well from dr kunle to brother king to brushing to, uh, to dr chica but here is the fear that i have and um because whenever a man receives the grace of god like apostle paul said the grace of god is is the grace of god god will have mercy upon whom he have mercy now the issue is this you don't know when death is going to come. So this is the reason that every iniquity must be repented of. Immediately you are convicted by the Holy Spirit. Like you said, your grace will run out in death. And God helps you. How many wives can pray their husband back? How many wives can pray their wife, uh, their their, their husband back or how many husbands can also pray their wives back it's not everybody we've had cases of people that we prayed and prayed and thinking they are going to come back that is why Paul said in Galatians chapter 2 verse 21 I do not frustrate the grace of God so like Apostle Paul rightly said even though we know that the grace of God abound we are seen much more abounded but we have to make sure that we are conscious that we do not allow this thing. Take advantage of the mercy while you are still alive. Ask God for mercy every second, every minute. While you are driving, 
you don't know. You don't know. Repentance, that's why for me, I believe that as a Christian, you need to keep repenting as anything comes to your mind. The Holy Spirit remind you, Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive me. So that anytime this thing called death come, for adventure, there is nobody there to pray you back. You want to be sure you make eternity. That's number one. Number two, I was listening to a message by um, uh, Professor Sadhu, and he said, the Lord Jesus told him, look, that you can repent to an umpteen time while you are still alive in this body. That the moment you are dead, that is it. Whatever death catch you with, that is what you are going to be judged with. Now, something happened many years ago when I was pastoring in Nigeria. There used to be a woman in our church. She used to be one of these people you can refer to as mothers in the church. Vibrant for God. This woman loves God. This woman knows God. People of God, don't let us take this thing for granted. And uh, there was an issue between her and a lady. Everybody talked to her. When she was in the sick bed, I tried to talk to her. Please, mama, let this go. Forgive. And he, she told me I've forgiven this and that. <laughs> Dr. Obina, I was shocked. Six months after, she's dead. She's gone. We buried her. I went to another state to go and minister. In another church, who does not know anything about me? A lady prophetess, who does not know anything about me? Does not know where I'm coming from. She was also invited from another ministry. As I said, after I finished ministration, she was in the spirit, came up to me and told me, said some things which are very powerful, confirmed, they knew everything she told me. And she said something to me in vernacular. He said, there is a woman that died in your church six months ago. Everybody in the church see her as a wonderful woman. I said, let me tell you, my son, she's not in my bosom. She's in hellfire. I, 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 I shouted. Okay. Initially, I thought that might be a joke. Three months after, I was in another meeting. Somebody else who does not know this woman, not a member of her church, another, another lady professor told me, he said, this lady, this there's a woman who died in your church. All of you are singing in your church. And as I'm very careful when I go to officiate burial ceremony, I've learned not to say some things anymore when I'm preaching at burial function. Because we grew up, I, I grew up my 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 uh paternal biology, uh, uh my grandfather was a glican. And you know that in the Anglican church, when we when we are taking somebody to the burial ground before you take them to church, the uh, brigade boys, they will be singing, blowing trumpet, will be singing, beating drum. You know, those kind of things we do back home. And one of the popular songs we used to sing, and we'll be dancing, the, the family will be dancing. Babari leu, ile lu lo, tarara. You know, that father has gone home, he has gone home. The Israel now is, I don't know which home. Heavenly home. <laughs> oh, oh, eternal hell. Because there are people that we don't know. And yet, it's amazing. A story that I had, I read in God's General. And many of you, if you've read God's General, you've had the story mm -hmm. of A.A. Allen, or you've had mm -hmm. some of them. Many of these people. So, like, to confirm what Dr. Chika is saying, because sometimes between life, there is a step between life and death. Now, this, something shocked me last year. Myself and my wife were in Lancaster. California to attend a conference in um, uh, Professor Sadu was ministering there and he said that many of us we are wrong contrary to what we have read that A. a. Allen, it was said that A. a. Allen was mightily used of God in fact that he died a drunkard but I was shocked when Professor Sadu said many of you said that A. a. Allen died a drunkard is in hellfire he said let me tell you I saw A. a. Allen in heaven it, that blew my, it blew my theology. What happened between death, between that moment that A. Allen was frustrated to the point that he was drunk and he passed? What happened? That shook me. I've read many books, many, a lot of people, theologians and historians said A. Allen died a drunkard. But Professor Sadu said he saw A. A. Allen in heaven. He said, so many of you, what you believe or what you have been told is wrong. He said, because you don't know what happened between the time the man is dying. So did the Holy Spirit convince him? And the man quickly said, Lord have mercy, forgive me. 
So this is very important. Never, never for one second frustrate the grace of God by thinking that, oh, I have prayed for forgiveness in the morning. I am clean for today. That's why I love the way that the Jew said it. In the morning, ask for mercy. Afternoon, before he goes to bed, he said he makes sure that himself and his wife, even if there's any quarrel, we want to settle it. Because nobody knows when death is going to come. My wife asked me one day, he said, only the Bible said two shall be lying down. One shall be taken and the other left. <laughs> so what do you what do you think? Ah, I say it's either the two of us be taken or both of us begin to sleep in separate room so that when they come, they will take each person from the room where they are. So we got to understand that the mercy of God abound every day, but yet we must not have frustrated assuming that we are righteous. Take advantage of the grace. Repent as quickly as possible so that we can take advantage of that grace. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you to everyone that has contributed to this night's uh, study. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you. The Lord favor you and make his face to shine upon you Amen. and give you peace in all your doings in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, because the Lord understood that there will come a time when we will put this kind of argument and be arguing it in our virtual church, as our sister always calls it, the virtual uh, altar. That is why the Lord gave us this conclusion to the matter. Let's turn our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 4. And I'll round up with there in conclusion, and we'll go to the place of prayer and perhaps announcements. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. I have so much smile when I read it because in as much as we have answered everything, given all our answers and everything. Yeah, I can't see the question. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Did you see the Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Are we there? Yes, I want we are. To be there. <laughs> I want everybody to be there. You see, irrespective of your argument, irrespective of your questions, irrespective of your explanations, irrespective of what you think and what I think, the scripture says, let us, because it's almost like the scripture was even listening to all of us as we are arguing and talking back and forth. And it just says, let us, therefore, come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. I don't know when is your time of need. I don't know if your time of need is now, this night, or perhaps later on. It's not a matter of how many times have you offended God and asked God to have mercy. Mm. It's not a matter of whether you even did offend God or not. It's a matter of, can you come with boldness before his throne of grace? Or you are scared to come with boldness to his throne of grace. Mm. You will only be scared to come with, to his throne of grace if you are being condemned and not convicted by of your whatever decisions or actions you may have taken that is, you know, tantamount to sin. But then when you can boldly at any point in time, mm. come, whether it is your last minute on it or your first minute on it, mm. come before his throne of grace and obtain mercy. mercy. Thank then you. you will find grace to help mm. you at mm. the time of need. Come boldly unto the throne of grace. Come boldly unto the throne of grace. I say it with so much excitement because I know that if there is anything that can hinder you 
anything that the enemy can hinder you from the grace of God and the presence of God is to make you not to be bold to come to the throne of grace. That is the first thing the enemy will do for you. He will put shame on you. He will put fear on you. Mm. He will put castigation on you. He will put the dejection on you. Rejection on you. Filth on you. Uh, insecurity on you. Unworthiness on you. All those things to prevent <laughs> you from coming to the throne of grace. grace. Amen. Let's bow down our heads as we pray. Yes, Lord. I just want you to talk to God with an open heart. Open heart. Just talk to God. Just talk to God. Whatever you want to say to God, just talk to Him. In whatever language you want to speak to Him, just talk to Him. Lord have mercy. It has been an eye opening study this Lord, evening. Have mercy. Have the study of requesting for mercy, asking God for mercy, finding grace to help. Mercy, mercy, mercy says I know your mercy. Mercy intervenes. Mercy, oh God. And mercy flows from the throne of grace. Father. Mercy, 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 oh have mercy, Lord. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Father, have mercy on me. Lord, Lord, have mercy on my household. Have mercy on my family, on my wife. Lord, have mercy on us as a people. Lord, have mercy. Let your mercy flow. Let your mercy flow. Let your mercy flow. Father, let us find grace, 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 grace to come with boldness into your friends, into your presence. Yes, thank you, Lord. If there is one thing I would ask you to pray about this evening, it's Lord. Give me the boldness to always come to your throne. Yes. In the name of Jesus, Luski and Lord, Lord, give me the boldness to always come to your throne. To come before no the throne. No matter what it is, in the name no matter Jesus. what may have happened, Lord, Master. I don't want to lose the boldness to come ba, ba, to your ba, 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 throne. Ba, 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 Lord, I don't want to lose the boldness Lord. to empty myself before your throne. Lord, Lord I don't want to lose the boldness to. <laughs> To, to, to come before you, Lord. I don't want to lose that boldness. Lord, I don't want to get to a stage that I will find it difficult oh, to speak yes, Lord. To you. Lord, I don't want to get to a stage that I won't be able to express my heart mm. before you. Lord, Lord, help me. Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord, help me. Have mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, give me the courage. Give us the courage and the boldness to come before your throne every day that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in this time of need, in this crucial time of our lives. In every aspect, oh Lord, spiritually, physically, mentally, financially, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Amen. The Amen. cross. The cross of Jesus, the glorious cross of Jesus. At the cross, at the cross, at the cross mm. is where we hang and crucify everything that restricts us from having to come before the presence of God. Yes. The cross stands for victory on the cross the cross yes lord stands for strength mm. the cross stands for hope thank you jesus as we round up tonight i want you to look up to the cross look up to the cross i look up to you look up to the cross look up to the cross i look up to your look up to the cross for help in the name of jesus look up to the cross for help yes look up to the cross for help Thank you, Lord. Look up to the cross for a new release of strength. The cross of Jesus. The cross of Calvary is the place of strength. Look unto your cross, O God. Look unto your cross. Lembra in Balabo Shada. Jesus. 
solid rock I stand on the ground. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if anybody knows the, the word is very well. Pastor, help us. His old is coming and his blood support me in the women floor. Support me in the when all around my soul gives way. When all around my soul then it's all my open stay. On Christ the solid rock. On Christ the solid rock. All of the ground. Sing it all of the ground. All of the ground. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight for the power of the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for your word tonight. Thank you because at the throne of grace, at your cross, we find mercy and hope to help us in this time of need. Lord, we realize and acknowledge that we can help ourselves. Our confidence and our hope is in you. So tonight we come before the throne of mercy, Lord. We pray that you help us, Lord. Show us your mercy and let your mercy speak on our behalf. Give us Restore our confidence that have been eroded by sin, by condemnation, by guilt, by men in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come back to you, Lord, knowing fully that you help us. We cry, oh Lord, do not take away your mercy away from us. As you took it away from Saul, don't take it away from us. Lord, let us be able to receive your mercy every day of our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank Amen. you, Father. For in Thank Jesus' you, name we pray. Bless your son that Amen. comes to us, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Be before we round up, I want to somebody ask a question. I didn't I didn't see it on time. And some people are always changing their name on their phone. So we don't even know. So this person said, Does um oh Jesus, where is it? He said, Does that mean? That we should learn to, if God, okay, fine. If God tell us to forgive 70 times seven, what does that mean? Does that not mean that we should learn to continuous, continuous, continuously extend grace as God grant us such? Yeah, you are right, because God will not ask us to do what He Himself cannot do. He asks us to forgive 70 times seven times, which is 490 times. And I think that is per day. So if God can for God will ask you to forgive 470 times or 490 times a day, God will forgive you 490 times a day. And I don't know anybody that will offend you 490 times a day. Even a madman cannot offend you 490 times a day. You understand? But God is just trying, Jesus was using that, that no matter how much people offend us, uh, the mercy of God is never exhausted. But like we have rightly said, nobody should take advantage of that grace of God, we should not abuse it because nobody knows the time when death shall come. But while you are still in this flesh, and I love the way Dr. Obina rounded up, that what is that thing that is eroding you from coming to the throne of grace? And most of the time, I tell you, is guilt, is condemnation, and that is what sin does. Sin always robs us of our confidence to come before the throne of God. And let me tell you something, anytime you find yourself that you have sinned, don't let sin keep you away from the throne. Let it push you back because uh, that is the only place you are going to find uh, mercy. That is the only place you are going to find deliverance. That is the only place. That is the only person who can help you. 
He, he, some, somebody once told me, he said, if Jesus did not collect my sin, who is going to collect it from me? He said, nobody can help me. He's only Jesus. He said, I will always go to him. So always let us learn how to go to him and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So let's unmeet ourselves and celebrate Dr. Obina tonight. Everybody go ahead and just say thank you to yeah. Jesus. Thank and you. thank you, Dr. Obina. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you God, for, for using God. your son, Dr. Obina. Uh, to, to use, you, for God to use Lord. you. And we pray for fresh grace uh, uh, yeah. for you in Jesus' name. Yeah. And I pray yeah. for everybody yeah. watching online that will be grace of God for you. So don't forget, you want to give your tithe and offering, go ahead and do that. On Saturday, there is the healer. The healer 2020. 2020 is going to be by 3 p.m. The flyer is out. Sister BC is going to send. Okay, thank you. That's the uh, uh, that's the, that's the flyer and uh, the the Zoom account and everything for the healer. You say will be streaming on Facebook. It will be sent to us, so please keep that in mind. And don't forget that on Saturday, the 15th, Pastor Akiola will be with us for a special uh, supernatural encounter with the Holy Ghost uh, team, a strange out of God. So get yourself ready. Uh, Saturday, Sunday, God has prepared a lot of things for us. Susie want to show the flyer for Pastor Akiola as well. So we want everybody, get somebody, invite somebody, talk to somebody. People are, is, 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 is a very troublous time that we are in. A lot of people are seeking the voice of God, the mind of God. God has prepared something special for you and I. And the Lord will be speaking to us by his servant. And we trust God that it's going to be a wonderful time in the presence of God. So please invite somebody, bring them to the line, and let us share the word of God together. And the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. And so, and uh, also, the last but not the least, the meeting we are supposed to have all workers and ministers on the 20th. Uh, that meeting is going to be is going to be virtual. We are not going to meet in church because right now, a uh, report reaching me says that um, COVID-19 have started spiking up again um, in Santa Clara County. It's moving to purple instead of towards green. So we don't want to uh, uh, take advantage of the grace of. We don't want to frustrate the grace of God. So and. Uh, so we don't want to uh, create any trouble for ourselves. So let's, we are, the meeting is going to be remotely on, on the 20th and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So detail will be sent out and the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Shall we share the grace together? Let's share the grace together in fellowship. One to go. May the grace the of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the love of love God, of God and the, and the Holy, Spirit. Holy Spirit be with us now and forever more. Amen. Amen. Surely, let our mercy follow us all the days of our life. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you. God bless you. Shalom. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Keep on enjoying the mercy of God. Take advantage of his mercy. Every day, make sure you pray. His mercy. They are new every morning. And there is mercy for you. Nehemiah prayed for mercy before the king. So if you are going for a job interview, you are going for an, uh, whatever immigration, say, Lord, the man or the men I'm going to meet, I receive mercy before them. And the Lord will grant you mercy. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Good night. Thank you, sir. God bless you. you. Sir. God bless you. you. you God bless you. So we Good meet. Night. Don't forget the Hila on Good Sunday. Good night, sir. And God bless you. Thank you so much. Shalom. Amen. Good night. Good night. Good night. God bless you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.